and welcome to You So You. My name is Zoe and this is my channel all about the crafty bits and pieces I get up to. I knit, I sew, I spin and I drop spindle, I dabble in weaving from time to time and anything else that takes my crafty fancy. But today we're looking at what I've been working on in January so grab a brew, put your feet up and let's get started. <music> Welcome, welcome back to any returning viewers and to any new viewers, a very warm welcome to you. Now, as I mentioned at the opening to the video, we're looking at what I've been working on during the 11 billion days of January. Uh, but before we do that, let's get started with what I am wearing. This is the South Bank sweater top version, uh, which I made ages ago um, in some jersey from Minerva and the Riley dungarees, which is a true bias pattern. Uh, again, made with Minerva fabric, so there will be more details about both of these projects on my Minerva profile, which is linked down below. I have to say though, I do need to make some more of these uh, Southbank tops, because during the autumn and winter, this gets worn an awful lot. So I'm going to need to have a few more in my rotation, I think, for next year. This year? We're in 24 already, yes. Um, so, yeah, hopefully at some point this year I'll get some more of these made, but uh, no promises. It's a moving swiftly on to finished objects for January. Let's start with the one that was on my needles for the longest. It is a pair of socks. This is the Lilica sock pattern. I haven't put them on sock blockers because the interesting bit of this pattern is down the front of the socks. And that's this lovely rusamine uh, pattern. And it just wouldn't show up on blockers because of the way blockers work. At uh, least not to its best effect anyway. So these were in The Knitter magazine. Uh, they are a standard heel flap and gusset uh, with a slip stitch heel pattern. Work from the top down. Now my preference is to work socks two at a time. So I did that with these. My preference is also to work them toe up. Um, I know where on my foot to put the heel for like a short row heel. Not so much for a heel flap and gusset. Although I'm working on that with a pair of socks that I haven't touched since Christmas so I won't be showing you those um but yeah these will work top down two at a time heel flap and gusset and what I find with top down socks is I never quite get the point at which you start the toe quite right and they quite often end up ever so slightly short which is the case with these um however they're only like a couple of rows short so it's not like I need to rip back and redo it. They will stretch out with wear. They're not uncomfortably tight. They're just a little bit snugger than my preference in the length version. So I did quite well with those. And um, they came off the needles. I grafted up the toe and looked at them and went, oh, that foot looks short. Uh, but yeah, I tried them on and they're, they're fine. They're not too bad. Um, so yeah, so that's my first finished object for January. The Lilica socks. Designer's surname is Bird can't remember their first name I'll put it on the screen um yeah and I've worked them in coupe socks yeah which I've had in my stash for for years um they were meant to be a different pair of socks that just didn't happen um and yeah the roost mean te technique is lovely it's really easy to work really effective I've got these lovely little flower patterns at the top and I did a video a few weeks ago on how I was working that technique so you feel free to look back and uh, take a look at that if you want to have a go at that technique. Uh, I quite fancy putting it onto pretty much every stocking stitch project, um, which I won't, um, but I'm sure I'll find some place for it in some stocking stitch projects. Uh, so it is a nice, simple technique and a nice way to use up little bits of scrap. Uh, so I'll try and remember to link whichever corner it's in, uh, the, the Rusamine video, for you to go and check out once you finish watching this one. My next fi finished object is one that I also started. I started in January, started in January and finished in January. Uh, that's pretty good going. This is a wool couture kit. I bought it from Marks and Spencers with a voucher from my boss. Um, and yeah, it's a hot water water cover. Co it is a little bit loose and floopy around the edges of my hot water bottle which I suspect is a gauge issue because uh, who swatches with a hot water bottle cover? Um, it's fine, it, it's a quick knit, it's in a nice chunky yarn, it's a merino unspun yarn, uh, it's like a roving yarn. Um, this bit's a little bit looser than I would like so I might put some buttons on there to hold the flap down. The pattern did call for pom-poms on the end of the bow 
I've opted not to include them because I thought they might be a bit annoying if I'm snuggling it in bed. But, uh, yeah, so moss stitch pattern, uh, twisted cord to go through the neckband. It's a little bit taller than the top, but nice and open at the top, so easy access to fill it. Um, and the flap will enable me to reuse the cover in a couple of years when this water bottle needs replacing because they depending on how much you use them um, you can probably extend their lifespan a little bit if you don't use it very often but technically speaking the hot water bottles only have a two-year lifespan and because they obviously sit on the shelves in warehouses for a little while by the time you get them this one's already older than that so so well since it was made anyway but it's obviously not been used so i'm not going to do too much about that uh, but i will change it in a couple of years time so that is there i've not used it yet because it just hasn't been cold enough for me to need to use it since i finished knitting it um but yeah it is nice and soft and squishy the cover is nice and thick which i like for a cover uh, a lot of patterns i've seen for water bottle covers are in stocking stitch in color work uh, but they're in like fingering and dk weight yarns whereas this one being a chunky and being in moss stitch it just gives you that little bit more insulation on your hot water bottle to make it stay warm a little bit longer, but also protection between you and the hot water bottle. I used to have one that my grandmother bought me when I was at school and that was a, a Toad to Toad Hall felt sewn cover that it came with. And that was really thin. So I'd quite often end up with like red marks where the hot water bottle had been. So I think thicker is better when it comes to hot water bottle covers. Um, so yeah, so I might put a couple of toggle buttons on just to hold that flap down. I say it was a kit from World Couture. I didn't buy it directly from them. If I had, they do an option which, when they have it in stock, which will include the hot water bottle. I like to buy the hot water bottle separately. Um, but they include everything else in the kit. So you get needles, you get a darning needle or yarn, that kind of stuff. The pattern itself is very beginner friendly, very simple pattern. Uh, all you need to know how to do is knit and purl. As soon as you've got that down, you can follow that pattern. And in fact, even if you were learning to knit and purl, because it's moss stitch and you're doing knit and purl on every row, it'd be a really good way to learn those stitches. Um, but the yarn is not beginner friendly, as far as I'm concerned. Being an unspun roving type yarn, it breaks really easily. So if you're uh, hanging on to the yarn for dear life, like a lot of beginner knitters are, that's going to break as you're working it, which would be very frustrating. Uh, as an experienced knitter, as in a knitter who's got a couple of projects behind you, you'll be fine because you'll have worked your tension out a bit more. Um, so you won't need to, to be knitting for very long to be able to knit this. I just wouldn't do it for your first project. Maybe not your second. Get a couple under your belt first and then do something in this type of yarn. But by all means, get a more tightly spun, chunky yarn and use that pattern. It'll be fine. Uh, my final finished object for January is sitting here and it's huge. Uh, this was the last couple of videos on my channel. Again, if I remember, I will link them um, wherever it appears in the little eye thing. This is my log cabin quilt block project bag. As you can see, I used the same fabric for the overalls that did for some of the uh, the quilting on this bag. It's used up quite a few of my scraps, quite a few of my remnants, and it's huge. It is about half full at the moment with yarn for a project. Um, and it's not tightly packed, but I've got quite a few uh, balls of yarn in here for the project. And uh, one thing I will probably do fairly soon is switch out the ribbons that I've used for the drawstring. They're just not working as well as I would like which is partly how I threaded them, I think, and also partly the ribbon themselves. Um, so they keep working themselves loose. <laughs> the knots come undone when I tie it in a bow. Mm. Uh, yeah, so that's my, my th third and final finished object. Um, all I did was worked up quilt blocks and used those to base the measurements for the rest of the bag on. So you can very easily customise the size for this. Um, I did vlog making the, the log cabin blocks in one video the two versions of them and I also vlogged making the bag itself so that's my last two videos before this one so yeah feel free again to pop back and take a look at those um 
I'm really pleased with it. It's going to be useful. At the moment, it's got a sweater project in here. It, it's big enough for blanket projects. It's big enough to have multiple projects in. So, with that being said, let's get on to works in progress. We'll start with the one that's in this bag, um, as it's huge and going to get in the way. Um, so, in here I have a whole bunch of these 50 skein, 50 gram uh, skein balls, hanks, whatever you want to call them, of Wool of the Andes in Merlot Heather. This is a sport weight yarn from Knit Picks, and it's 100% Peruvian Highland wool, so non-superwash. Um, which means I will be able to spit splice it, which is useful. There are 137 yards to 50 grams. I will put the meterage on screen because it doesn't say it on the the ball band. And um, although I know how to do the conversion because I've taught it, um, it's enough that I won't be doing in my head. So I'll put the conversion on screen for those of you who work in meters. Um, being a Brit, I work in both. Uh, so this yarn I ordered from the States for a knit along that started yesterday. I'm filming this on the 1st of February. Uh, I am part of an online international virtual knit night, the International Virtual Knit Nights, um, which we meet by Zoom and we've been doing that since before it was cool. Um, and one of my fellow knit nighters was working on a test knit for a friend of hers who's also a designer. And they're now helping to run and knit along with the designer for that project. That project is the Barraquet, which I will put a picture of on screen. Uh, I think there's a swatch. So the Barraquet is a cropped sweater that is worked uh, sideways. So you cast one at one cuff, work your way across the body and cast off at the other cuff. And then obviously pick up the neckband and hem. So... I'm using this Knit Picks Sport Weight yarn. I have half a sleeve, although obviously I've modified because uh, having never knit a side to side sweater or a sweater with dolman sleeves, why wouldn't I modify the pattern? Um, so what I've done so far is I have doubled the depth of the cuff. Uh, it was about an inch deep before, it's now about two inches deep. I also used a uh, the Italian tubular cast on, which is not the cast on called for in the pattern, but I prefer the finish. So I prefer the finish of that, I prefer the de deeper depth of the cuff. And then looking at the measurements on the schematic from this point to the end of a sleeve, which in the pattern is about there, um, I wanted a longer sleeve, partly because I wanted the deeper cuff, partly because um, Dorm sleeves are tricky to get into jackets and I live in the UK so I, I wanted a longer sleeve rather than a shorter sleeve for, for a jumper that's going to be my outer garment uh, come spring, autumn and cooler summer evenings. So by lengthening the cuff that's given me an extra inch and the cuff length that I prefer uh, but that would take it to kind of there-ish which is a bit of a weird length for me. So I've also added in additional non-increase rounds to slow the rate of increase on the sleeve um, and give a bit more length to the sleeve. So hopefully I've done the calculations correctly and the sleeve will sit around about my wrist. Um, but we shall see as we get further through. Now one of the other key features of the Barraquette pattern is the texture that's going to sit across the diagonal on the outside of the body portion and in the pattern it gives you instructions for how to swatch that. I'm going to hold that forward into the shaft of sunlight that's just in front of me coming across. I'm glad I put it out of shot but hey. So we can take advantage of that sunlight to show you the texture in this swatch. It's got these lovely bubbles and it's got some eyelets in there as well um, and it's actually going to give you a bit more of a sense of the colour of this sweater. It's this lovely merlot heather so it's uh, Got all sorts of little flecks of colour coming through in there. It's not a, a flat colour by any means. And it's on the brown side of burgundy. Um, so yeah, it's going. To, it's a nice sort of autumnal neutral colour to me. It works quite well with this fabric. Not sure how practical putting this sweater on on top of the dungarees will be. We'll see if it works underneath. Um, but yeah, it works very well with this fabric. So uh, you never know. I might have to get more of the fabric or more of the yarn to do some coordinating. 
garments. Um, so yeah, so that's my swatch from my Barricade. Uh, like I said, I only cast on yesterday. I cast on later in the day than I would have liked because I was waiting for new cords to arrive. Now I use Nitpicks interchangeable needles most of the time. Um, and their cords have quite a lot of memory. Um, so I heard about the Knit Pro Mindfulness Collection cords. I have a few other bits and pieces from the Mindfulness Collection that my stepmoms bought me um, for various Christmas gifts. Um, and I quite like the range, but the cords have no memory. So I thought I'll try those out. I did hear that they had swivel joins, but I'm not noticing much of a swivel with this, so I may need to to re-look and see if I can find some swivel jointed cords to try out as well. Uh, so I'm testing the cords out to see if I want to change all of my cords to these ones. Um, which ones with the swivel joint? Because the knit picks interchangeable needle set doesn't come with cords with no memory or swivel joints. So I thought I'd give them a try. Um, you can use Knit Pro cables, which I think is Knit Pride. There's Pride in the States, but over here it's Knit Pro. Um, they're all made in the same factory, they're made by the same manufacturer, so the cables and the needle tips are interchangeable. I did also, with my new cores, buy a pair of uh, Mindfulness Collection needle tips, so that I had a spare set in this size. They are a little shorter than my Knit Picks ones, which will be useful for a small circumference knitting, I suspect. Um, but they're not too bad to work with, they're, they're just about long enough for me to work with on this length cord, even though I'm used to a slightly longer. But one of the nice things about them, and this is unlikely to show up on the screen, but we'll try, is they have printed on them a word. These ones say breathe. Uh, apparently they're different in different sizes of needles. I don't know. And they've also got nicely clearly printed on a lot larger than the etching I've got on my other needles the size of the needle, so that's useful. So I may also be gathering a few other sizes of these tips, uh, particularly in sizes that I use for smaller circumference knitting, so I think that might be useful. So that's my first work in progress. Um, I'll move that out of the way. Um, I am excited to, to try this sweater. It's not the shape of sweater that I've had much experience wearing. It's not the sort of sweater that, I'm, that I gravitate towards in general. But it does look kind of cool and funky and um, I think it'll look good with, with jeans and overdresses and things so I'm willing to give it a go um, but like I say I'm not gonna be able to wear jackets with it because of the dolman sleeves so yeah we'll see how it goes. Very very excited to try it and I'm enjoying the knitting process so far. The pattern is extremely clearly written. Each section that you work on has a little diagram with it where Ina, the designer, has shaded in the section that you are working on in one colour and the section that you have just completed in another colour and the rest of the the schematic is, is uncoloured. So at a glance, you can see, without even having to read, you can see where you are at in the pattern and find your place nice and easily. So I thought that was a really nice touch for a slightly more unusual set of design. I may need to knit more of her projects. Okay, so moving on to works in progress that you've already seen. I'm not going to show you my Nutcracker socks because um, I really don't think I've put any stitches on them at all since I last saw you. But I will show you how I'm getting on with the Barragan shawl, again from the Knitter magazine. Uh, I have, at the moment, got a subscription for that particular publication. So we're still working in the bright pink magenta -y colour. I'm going to take my needle tips off so I can release the uh, needles from the, the ball of yarn. Okay, we can leave that one with it on because that one's got no stitches on. It saves me losing the needle point protector. Okay, so this is a lace shawl. Um, I am half a repeat further on than I was last time I showed you. So it is growing gradually. Being lace, it does look a little bit wrinkly um, until it's blocked. Uh, but I am looking forward to this being done. Um, I would have got more of this done, but my other work in progress has been a, a slight obsession. So we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, I am looking forward to this being being finished. I think it's going to be quite handy uh, for cooler evening because it should be quite a light scarf and it should be good for dressing things up. 
the other colour that goes into to the borders for this project is this colour. So that's going to look nice together. They are hand dyed Macintosh yarn. Um, all the parts for this pattern have now been published in the Knitter magazine, so you can get back copies and all sorts to, to get them. The pattern, if it's something you're interested in, it was published in four parts. I'm sure it will eventually make its way onto independent release. And you can get the kit, the yarn, which is hand dyed blue face Leicester from Macintosh. They are selling it as kits. So if you Google Barragan shawl kits, you should be able to find them. And um, they are there is an advert in the Knitter magazine most months at the moment uh, for the kit, so uh, shouldn't be too hard to find. And you know what? I'm actually enjoying knitting on straight needles again. I learned to knit on straight needles, uh, but the only projects I've been doing on straight recently is this project and this project. Um, I generally use circulars these days, um, but yeah, I am enjoying working on the straights for a change. I'm only really using them because my circulars in the same size um, are sock needles. <laughs> I didn't fancy using sock needles. So, um, yeah, I mean, that, the, my Knit Picks needle set kit, kit set starts at 3.5 millimetres and I needed three millimetres for this project. And my sock needle three millimetres are like two inch needle tips. It's just too short of a needle tip for me. So I don't use them really very often as I have to. Um, so straight stitch and um, for, for a project that's knit and flat, it's fine. Um, it did take a bit of adjusting with how I hold the needles and how I move the needles to stop it clipping against the arm of the chair or the tray that I have that clips over the arm of my armchair that holds my knitting patterns and, and notions and things as I'm working on, on stuff. Um, so yeah, that being said, enjoy the project. I'm just working on it a little bit at a time, obviously during the daytime. So it will be a slower progress than something that was more sort of cably or stocking stitch or texture knit because it's lace. I want to make sure I'm fully focused and awake and not watching the TV or on uh, knit night whilst I'm working on that. So let's move on to the project that has been a little bit of an obsession through January. So this I cast on New Year's Day and it is worked in my own hand dyed yarn. Um, I am still auditioning colourways if a hand dyed yarn so I'm not, I have dyed some more yarn but I'm not going to show you until I've got a little collection together because still trying to work out the kinks. So this is in my own hand dyed yarn. Um, my, the, the top of the colourway, the top colourway you can see is different to the bottom because they were done in different batches and as the colour is, way is developing. Um, but I am pleased with how it's blended together. This is the Long Line Cardigan by Hoki Locatelli. I am working it in 100% Merino Superwash. Um, and that's how far I've got so far, which is not bad progress because it is a longer sweater, um, a longer cardigan. It's obviously takes a bit longer to do. I've still got the sleeves to do and I've got probably about 30, 35 rows to do before the hem. Uh, the front bands are worked at the same time as the body. So you, you've got one by one ribbing for X number of stitches and then stocking stitch and the, the hem will be in one by one ribbing as well. So once I've done that and done the sleeve, it's done. There's no picking up the stitches to do. It's There's no buttons on this cardigan. It's an open front cardigan um, and it's got its shoulder shaping sits at the back of the shoulders. I've seen a few people refer to this as English tailoring. I've not come across that phrase until this month, until like January this year. So it's not in terms of knitting. Um, so I need to do a little bit more looking up to see if that's actually what it's called, but it's a really nice effect. Um, so yes, I'm really pleased with this. You start this cardigan construction wise uh, with a rectangle here. And from, from there on, you pick up stitches here, incorporate your whole stitches from the rectangle and knit everything down to the hem in one piece. So although it's worked flat, it's nice and straightforward. It's a longer length, so it's on a, a circular needle because my straight needles would just bunch everything up and it'd be a pain. Um, 
and yeah then I'm just going to pick it up for the sleeves and do the sleeves and it'll be done I'm not that far away from that point which is great and I think it's going to be a really useful garment in my wardrobe so yeah looking forward to being done and part of the reason that I've had such an obsession with this garment is because it's so much one by one ribbing and stocking stitch for miles up until the point of the waist shaping where I had to count rows and put in decreases and increases I could read on my iPad whilst working on this. I finished seven books this month. No, I finished eight books this month because I just finished one yesterday and I've got two that are nearly finished. Like with knitting, I don't read one book at a time. I, I have multiple books on the go. Um, so I only read eight books in the whole of last year. <laughs> This project has uh, kick-started my reading habit back up again. Um, so that's that's good. Um, I've been meaning to read more uh, for a long time because I dabble in writing when I'm not doing crafty stuff. Um, and the more you read, the more it helps you writing and the more it encourages you to write. Um, so by increasing, I'm hoping that by increasing my writing, it motivates me more to go on with the writing projects uh, it feeds into the writing process a bit more because uh, that's kind of stalled. I've got a few right. I've got a massive writing work on hold at the moment uh, that I need to get back to. Um, whether that will ever see the light of day, who knows? But I enjoy the process, and that's the main thing. So that's my works in progress. That's my finished objects. That's what I am wearing. It's a bit of waffle about something completely unrelated. Uh, what else do I have to share with you? Ooh, plans. Plans. Okay, so I have a Minerva package here. I am part of the Minerva brand ambassadors program, and I have some Chantilly lace to work with at the moment for them for a specific project. But Chantilly lace is see through, so I needed to buy some other fabrics to go with it. But I'm just going to edit out me tipping this out because it'll just be wrinkly and crinkly and, and annoy people's headphones. Okay, so for those of you who aren't aware, later in the year I will be getting married and then I will be going on honeymoon. Now, my plan, I've ordered my wedding dress, so I'm not going to make it. My plan is to potentially make the bridesmaids dresses, so I need to actually get my niece's measurements soon, um, but I also need a formal dress for the honeymoon because we're going on a cruise. So I have here selection of fabrics. This is the brand ambassador for fabric at the top here, this lovely Chantilly lace. Um, and then I have a metallic organza. I hold that in the light so it shimmers a little bit. And I have a crepe, and they're all in like bottle green. Now, I'm planning on, on adapting a Vicky Sews pattern uh, for the Lorraine, I believe, I'll put it up on screen. Uh, it's not a very size inclusive pattern, so I will need to do some adjustments to the pattern before I cut it out and sew it up. So that's my next step. So next week's project is twirling um, and adapting that pattern to get what I want for the formal dress for the cruise. Obviously, the cruise is after, the honeymoon is after the wedding. So you'd think I'd want to do the bridesmaids dresses first. Uh, but no. I'm also trialling out working with some of these fabrics. I haven't worked with organza before, I haven't worked with Chantilly lace before. Um, and other types of fabrics that I might want to pick out for the bridesmaids. Probably going to use chiffon, but I may want to layer them with some other things as well. So, yeah, so I'm going to make the honeymoon dress first to trial out the fabrics and have a go at doing that sort of a style of dress. And depending on how that goes, that will then inform what happens with the bridesmaids dresses, whether I continue with the plan to make them. I say dresses, I'm, I'm planning the two piece. Um, whether I continue to make them or whether I purchase them. And if I continue with making them, what fabrics I get for them. So yeah, um, but bridesmaids dresses, if I do make them, you won't see them until after the wedding because surprises. So that's my main project coming up. Obviously, I want to get my long leg cardi done because February and March can be a little chilly. And I think an open fronted long leg cardi will be quite handy through the summer when it's not like baking, baking hot. 
and obviously I've got the Barraquette on the go, I've got the Barragan on the go, I want to get those done to progressed. The knit along is quite a long knit along so there's no rush there. And I've also got my Nutcracker socks that I didn't show you today because I haven't knit on them in January particularly. I need to get them done as well because my sock drawer needs an update. I keep taking out pairs of hand-knitted socks and finding they need mending. So. so thank you for spending some time with me today. Until the next one, there's this video here that may be of interest to you. And in the meantime, happy crafting and bye-bye for now.